Hey everyone, welcome to After Dark Analysis. Today we are going to be talking about the color theory behind horror films. Color is all around us, and most of us see it all day long, so it's something we are familiar with on a very base level. The way we perceive and react to colors has some basis in our hindbrain primal instincts. But a lot of it's based off our culture and the context in which the color is presented in. A cartoonish little heart on Valentine's Day being red is sweet and cute. Somebody's face or outfit being colored in red? Not so cute. Before we deep dive into how color theory relates to horror, let's define a few basic elements. Each color is comprised of three different things. Hue, which is the color itself. Saturation, which is the intensity of a color. If you're familiar with Wes Anderson's work, he uses a lot of saturated colors. And brightness, which is how dark or light the color is. One of the easiest ways to see this in film is to go back and look at the beginnings of Technicolor. A lot of those films are really bright because they wanted to show off what this new medium could do. Color grading allows filmmakers to enhance the colors, which helps set the mood for their work. This can be done via colored filters over lenses. Colored filters were used heavily in the original presentations of Cabinet of Dr. Calgary. Now films can also be digitally color graded. A go-to example of this is the film Oh Brother Where Art Thou, where most of the cells were recolored to be a warm sepia tone to make it feel more 30s. Filmmakers can further play with this idea through the usage of color combinations. Monochromatic color is using the same color just in different shades. This creates a sense of harmony throughout the film. The 1999 film The Matrix used green all throughout to give this sense of everything is in or connected to the Matrix. Analogous colors are colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. They make things feel more relaxed and harmonious, since these colors are normally found together in nature. 2006's Children of Men did this with yellow and green. Complementary colors are two colors that sit across from each other on the color wheel. These films are high contrast due to the mixing of warm and cool colors. 1958's Vertigo is a strong example of this. The actors are often dressed in green tones, but the background will be a bright red, or the reverse. So they're always standing in contrast with each other. And blockbusters use the combination of orange and blue so often it's become a joke. The reason complementary colors are such a popular choice is because if you have your character in one color, and your background in a complementary color, it's going to make their movements more dramatic. That's why this combination is often associated with conflict. Triadic color uses three colors spaced evenly apart on the color wheel. For example, red, blue, and yellow. General rule here is you want one color to be dominant, while the other two are used more as an accent. This is one of the least common color movie schemes, because it creates a more hectic and slightly off look to a scene. This is why we normally only see it in children's movies and a lot of films from the 70s or 70s period pieces, for example, Rush. Please forgive all the non-horror examples. I'm simply trying to use large mainstream films that most people have probably seen that are strong examples of these just to set a baseline of information. We will get exclusively to horror in just a little bit. There's also Split Complementary, which uses two colors across from one color. So the two opposing colors contrast it, but it creates a lot less tension than we see with triadic. Tetradic color uses four colors across from each other on the color wheel. This is rarely used due to how complex it can be. When it is used, it's normally for a more lighthearted scene. For example, the high heel scene in The Wolf of Wall Street. And last but not least, discordance is a deviation from color for emphasis. We see this in the 1925 adaptation of The Phantom of the Opera. When the Red Death comes down the staircase, it's a red object in a black and white film. The 1959 film The Tingler does the exact same thing with a bathtub filled with blood. Sin City is also heavily referenced for using this. Now just because all the examples given were black and white with a pop of color doesn't mean this only applies to black and white filmmaking. The 1999 film The Sixth Sense used splashes of red all over it for anything that had come in contact with the afterlife, specifically the doorknob that Bruce Willis's character couldn't get open. Now that we've established the basic idea, let's apply all this to horror. Starting out with the color black. 
Now, I know, it's, it's the absence of color, just stay with me here. Black often symbolizes the abyss, the unknown, remorse, fear, mystery, elegance, and sophistication. This is where it's important to notice that while most colors have meaning assigned to them, the context in which they are shown in can dramatically change. A villain like Darth Vader wears black, but so does a hero like Batman. A villain can turn into a man-eating clown shadow or hide in a dark room, but so can the hero we're rooting for. All colors have dualities in their meaning. The color white represents clarity, reflection, endlessness, purity, which is not so subtle for virginity, innocence, winter, birth, and sterility. In the 1900s, nurses began to wear white uniforms to show how clean hospitals were when they had a reputation for not being so clean. In the 2008 film Blindness, there were a lot of bright whites, oftentimes used in transitions from very dark scenes. If you saw this in theaters, you would know those transitions were enough to literally blind the audience or at least stun them for a few seconds, which did build a deeper connection to the characters and the story being told since it was about people losing their vision. Brown can mean simplicity, earth, dirty. Evil Dead uses this color heavily due to its setting. The woods are brown, the cabin's brown, the sofa inside is brown, Ash's pants are brown. By its very nature, this is a very brown film, because when you're telling the story about woods coming to life to attack people, it makes sense to have those trees stay a naturalistic color that most people would be familiar with. They easily could have put a filter on it to make the woods look more ominous and evil, but the surprise of the everyday element turning against you is what made this film what it was. Keeping everything in natural tones suited the story. Orange symbolizes warmth, warning, protection, growth, life and death, the sun rising or setting, and fire. As stated before, blockbusters often use the color combination of blue and orange. They do this for the intense contrast between the complementary colors, but as a general rule, warm bright colors visually enlarge objects, which makes them seem closer. The 2010 reboot of Nightmare on Elm Street use this popular teal and orange color palette, and it was clearly meant to be a big blockbuster. I also spent way more time than I care to admit looking for an orange horror film for this. Green symbolizes nature, destruction, wealth, greed, awakening, sickness, decay, good luck, and jealousy or envy. Seeing the color green also does elicit a physiological response. Our capillaries dilate and our blood pressure lowers. Sci-fi, as a genre, uses a lot of fluorescent greens. We see the idea of green representing sickness and decay in the series The Sick Child, done in 1885 by Edward Munch. The series was about his sister who died very young, and he uses a lot of green tints to show not only that she was sick, but she was kind of dying and decaying in front of his eyes. The 2004 film, The Machinist, uses the same idea. Greens are used all throughout the film to show how mundane and dull everything is, and the green makes it feel very dreary and lifeless, but combined with his physique, it gives our main character a very sickly feel to him, and gives us a visual representation of what's going on with him mentally. In the 1991 film, Silence of the Lambs, we have an entire scene that's nothing but green when we get a shot of Clarice in the basement being watched through night vision. We are seeing her through the killer's perspective and as an audience, we are literally watching his sickness be projected onto her. The color purple has deep connections to royalty since for a while they were the only ones allowed to wear it. But aside from showing how high class somebody is, it also shows power, wisdom, as well as arrogance and eroticism. Hitchcock used a mixture of purples and yellows to create the look of the film Vertigo, which was mentioned earlier. Yellow shows warmth, youthfulness, madness, insecurity, warning, power, elegance, and value when you think of it in terms of something like gold. Like purple, yellow also has some serious cultural significance among royalty. During the Ping Dynasty, only emperors were allowed to wear it. Yellow is the most visible to humans, hence road signs often being yellow. Also, babies tend to cry when they see yellow. 
This is a very common color palette for anything based in the desert. Like the 2016 film, It Stains the Sand Red, where a main character is walking through a yellow desert while being backed by the bright blue sky. Or any of the Hills Have Eyes movies. The 2015 gothic horror film Crimson Peak often shows our young leading lady dressed in whites and yellows, showing how happy and vibrant and hopeful she is and how much she's ready for progress. In stark contrast, her husband is often shown in dark greens and blacks, which can be alluring, but for the most part in this context is frightening. It's also worth noting that the short story The Yellow Wallpaper has a slew of adaptations in the horror genre, as well as some influence on the recurring yellow fluid we see in the 2017 film Mother. Pink being used is pretty straightforward. It's normally meant to show sweetness and femininity. In the 2015 film It Follows, Jay puts on a pink outfit in a room filled with pink. This is supposed to show her innocence and purity. We're seeing in this instance pink replace the white we normally see for this type of thing. But after Jay's attack, that pink is replaced by blue, sometimes being violated with strong reds. While blue and water are often used to show purity and cleanliness, in this case it's more about her sexual inexperience. In contrast to pink, red is a little bit more loaded. It's fear, death, violence, foreshadowing, hope, love, sensuality. Warm red tones usually show up in romances whereas saturated reds and blues are in comedies. Looking at the color red itself can raise blood pressure. It's also used to show fire, even though most fires are more of an orange hue. We tend to use it to represent Satan, evil, demons coming up from hell, which is believed to be filled with fire. And then there's the obvious connotation with blood, but rarely do we need a scene completely covered in blood to get what's going on. Red on its own is a powerful enough color, you don't need very much of it, so it's often paired with calming colors such as blue. Red is a recurring theme in the 1973 film Don't Look Now, most of the time through a child's bright red coat. Red here is linked to a primordial sense of fear and the fear all parents have about losing their children, but the allusion to Little Red Riding Hood is also very clear. The 1980s film The Shining uses a lot of muted pastels and greens, which were very popular in 70s decor. The great thing about having such a muted color palette means that when a higher saturated color comes up, it instantly grabs the audience's attentions, so you don't need to do a close-up to make it the focal point. Or you can say subtlety be damned and make the entire bathroom red, or fill an elevator with blood. And the elephant in the room Giallo absolutely loves the usage of bright, vibrant reds. Case in point, the 1977 film Suspiria. The use of red lighting is near constant. When the walls and scenes of the film aren't being lit red, we see our ballerinas wearing bright red lipstick or nail polish, which stands out against their pale skin tones. Argento did manage to throw in some other colors like pink, yellow, and blue. Blue, though, was often used to violate the red. Because again, we have this very hot, dangerous color mixed with this very cool, calming color. This color combination gave the film almost a neon effect and was meant to simulate a fever dream, helping the viewer to connect to the psychosis we're seeing on screen. The funny thing is when I say we're going to talk about color palettes and horror, most people's minds probably immediately went to black and red, shadows and blood. But believe it or not, blue is a much more common color palette in a horror film. Blue symbolizes a lot of really popular themes, like fantasy, which to be fair can apply to all filmmaking, cleanliness, which is common among most psychosis-based horror films, spirituality, which we see in films about possession, films about ghosts, as well as the god hand killer trope. It can show technology, which I've covered in the past on this channel, Sadness, which if we're talking about our typical horror movie, yeah, people are watching their friends die. They're going to be a little blue about it. Remoteness or isolation, basically every teen going into the woods horror movie. And last but not least, calm. Because when viewed, the color blue does release calming chemicals into our brain. Normally we don't think of calm when we think of horror movies, but few films are non-stop slashy stabby. We need those moments to breathe and that break from the tension 
to actually keep the tension going, otherwise we're just too wound up the entire time. Typically when we see blue used in a horror film, it's going to be mixed with either white or purple tones just to kind of balance it out. Depending on the type of blue, when it's used on a character, it can give a corpse-like appearance. A blue filter is very common to enhance the idea that these characters are in trouble and death might be imminent. The 1974 film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, when Sally's being chased through the woods by Leatherface, that scene is toned blue, which stands in stark contrast to what we saw with The Evil Dead where everything was kept more natural tones. Those scenes have completely different feels to them. One of the most iconic shots from the 1973 film The Exorcist is toned blue, where the priest is standing outside with his briefcase, because you could use that in marketing materials much better than you could Linda Blair's head turning around or her throwing up split pea soup. The Ring from 2002 used blue all through it on top of white tones to give everything a more eerie and ghostly feel. In the 2004 film Saw, our two main characters, as well as the bathroom they're stuck in, are shown in blues and purples. This created a somber feel and a tense, inescapable mood. Neon Demon from 2016 uses a lot of blues, often punctuated with reds, not only to give us a feel for the mood and scene, but to give us information about the characters themselves. These red highlights are called out during a bathroom scene where all the girls are putting on makeup, and one of them says her lipstick is called Red Rum obvious reference to The Shining. When Ruby walks into the bathroom, she has a red highlight, which is meant to show she's evil and bad and completely changing the tone of the scene. Since Jessie is supposed to be more innocent, she's often shown in blues and whites, but sometimes this changes to red to show there is an evil side underneath this. And that is how horror movies use color to engage the audience. I'd just like to take a moment out to thank my patrons, Carla Hoffman, Scotty Robot, and Ghani. If you'd like to contribute financially to this channel, it's $1. It gets you Discord access and a thank you in each video. Either way, your time and viewership is always appreciated. Thank you.